How's it going guys? What of course you'll be seeing today is a breakdown and review of the new assault rifle in Battlefield 4 that came as part of the weapons crate called the AN-94. The good old fan favorite from Battlefield 3 has returned. As usual I'll break down the stats of the weapon and give you the best idea for range, fire mode, attachments best suited for success. So first with the stats to paint you the picture of how the weapon is. Uh, it has a max damage per round at 24.5 and a minimum damage of 18. Damage drop off starts at 12.5 meters, ends at 60. Fire rate is on full auto is 600 rounds per minute, but 1200 when firing in the two round burst mode. The muzzle velocity is quite high at 620 meters per second, but it's nearly half of that when equipped with a suppressor at 350 meters per second. The bullet drop is more intense than the gravitational constant of the Earth at 15 meters per second squared, so the drop off of the bullets is actually significant. It has a max mag size of 31 and it fires a 5.45 by 45 millimeter round. The reload speed when it's completely empty is 3.5 seconds and 2.4 seconds when there's still a round left in the chamber. What I did for this review, a bit different than my usual old ones, is that I took the liberty of comparing this weapon to other weapons that are more popular and, and one that's very similar. So overall the recoil patterns of the N94 are very manageable. The vertical recoil is listed at 0.32 which is less than the, both the AEK at 0.42 and the ACE-23 at 0.36. But it's, it's a bit more intense than the M16A4 at 0.28. The horizontal recoil is listed as little to none because the, the recoil to the left is listed at 0 0.1 and it's listed at 0.12 to the right. So it has a slight bit of a deviation naturally firing to the right, but the like the difference of 0 0.02 is little to none. You won't really see it much bared out. Compared to the AEK, that is 0 0.25 to the left and 0 0.45 to the right. So the AEK took a big nerf. And the ACE-23, which is 0 0.17 to the left and 0 0.27 to the right. So this weapon has, and well, in the M16A4 A4 as well, it has less than that. So compared to another burst fire weapon, this one beats it out in terms of horizontal recoil. It beats out all three weapons, and it just it just barely loses out to the M16A4 in terms of vertical recoil. The first shot recoil multiplier is listed as a very, very manageable 2.1, and the spread increase per shot is listed as 0 0.078. So for basically both of these values, the, the first shot recoil multiplier and the spread increase per shot is lower than the AEK, the M16A4, and the ACE-23. So already this is painting the picture of a very accurate weapon. Uh, so as the logic bears out, this is a weapon that should be used in medium to longer range encounters to emphasize the extreme lack of recoil and the burst fire rate, which will be higher than firing in full auto. Yes, the 1200 round per minute magazine, uh, fire rate can be used in shorter range encounters as well. Uh, but if you can physically fire at that rate, the recoil will be quite pronounced. So emphasis should be placed on a slower, more controlled style. So what that does, as, of course, as the logic bears out, is it makes a medium to longer range encounter more desirable. In terms of attachment, I always choose the red dot sight as my optic because it happens to be my favorite. But this is a weapon with such good accuracy that you could probably equip like a, a medium range scope and maybe out snipe the bad snipers out there with this weapon at medium to longer range. In terms of accessory, I always choose the laser sight. I usually just turn it off and on as I go. But the reason why is if I'm do if I'm going through an area I'm not sure about or a close quarters environment. Uh, what I'll do is turn that on just in case I find myself in a surprise situation, but I turn it off because you don't need it at any other range. In terms of the barrel of choice, I'd go with the heavy barrel with this weapon. You don't need the compensator or the muzzle brake because you aren't accounting for any recoil at all. Uh, the heavy will add some vertical recoil prove it to it, uh, vertical recoil to it, but it improves your aim down sight accuracy and just fire your burst rate a little bit slower and you'll negate that recoil quite easily. In terms of the underbarrel, you can you can go without one at all. You don't you don't even need one to be blunt. Uh, but I, I if you really want to, you can choose the angled grip to reduce the first shot recoil multiplier slightly, uh, and to cut down on the spread a bit. Or if you want a more close aggressive close quarters aggressive style, which you shouldn't for this weapon, I wouldn't advise it because it's just it's so good at longer range. You can choose the vertical grip for the hip fire improvement aimed with the laser sight. So overall, this is a, a longer range weapon, but it's absolutely fantastic at those ranges. It's incredible. It's very popular, and it's popular for this reason. 
Have a good one.